Praise God. Praise God. And give an honor to God who is the head of my life. I am so grateful and thankful for another day in Christ. Hallelujah. And I bless his name today. He is so truly wonderful, kind, loving. And I am excited about being in the land of living and in a, being able to worship God today. Uh, once again, I thank you for joining and listening in and tuning in to the spoken word. I am Pastor Sandra Glover Carter of Shield of Faith Ministries, located at 17356 Northland Park Court in the city of Southfield, Michigan. Hallelujah. We are not holding service in the in the building, but um, right now we are holding uh, broadcast on YouTube and uh, and on uh, Facebook. I generally post the messages from today on YouTube channel, The Spoken Word, uh, Pastor Sandra um, Glover Carter, um, and you can see today's message and any past messages. I'm going to ask, I have someone on my dual call, I'm going to ask that they turn their volume all the way down. I'm getting feedback. Um, Gail, can you hear me? Turn your volume down. So with that said, Father God, we thank you, O oh God, for the word that's about to go forth this day. We ask, O oh God, that you move, O oh God, mightily during this broadcast. I ask, O oh God, that you equip me with the right equip me with the right words to say. Let your anointing flow through me. Let the Holy Spirit guide my every word, every thought, and everything that I say concerning the message for today. Oh, open up the ears of each and every listener today. Let their be no hindrances or any distractions that will cause them to lose focus on what the word of God says today. We thank you, O oh God, just for being the Lord of our life. We give you praise, we give you honor, and we give you glory. And I thank you, O oh God, for each and every person that you lead to tune in to listen to this message this morning. These things we ask in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Amen. Once again, uh, thank you for joining the Spoken Word broadcast. I'm going to also uh, let you know that you can, if you want to give to this ministry, you can um, look at the dashboard, click on the Givelify link, and it'll take you to Givelify Shield of Faith Ministries, or you can copy and paste it um, into the um into your computer and it'll lead you there. But let's get going because I have so much that I want to share. I may or may not finish today, but God dealt with me this morning um, concerning love. You know, we often throw that word out, I love you, I love you, uh, before when we greet people. Um, Hi, I love you. When we're about to leave their presence, we say we love them. Uh, but do you really understand what the love of God is? Um, and that's what I want to, um, that's where I want to take you today. Understanding how to walk in God's, the God kind of love, not what the world says, but the God kind of love. And that is so key in really living for God and being, um, showing the love of God in our lives. So that's what I want to talk about, about love. Uh, I want to define what love is. Um, you know, many of you may have your view of what love is, but, uh, when someone asks you what is love, do you define love as an emotion, a feeling, uh, is your impression of what love is based on personal relationships, your broken heart or how someone treats you? Is it an expression that you share to tell someone how you feel, uh, about them as an afterthought? Um, do you put love into practice? You know, do you practice um, when you tell someone that you love them? Is that a, something that you practice in their lives? And are you truly able to completely um, trust people and love them without doubting what they say is the truth? So those are some questions I want you to ponder on as I go through and explain what love is. But most of our, are you truly walking in lo love? Can you walk in something that you don't understand? And are you being truthful to someone? Truthful when you tell them that you love them? Those are key questions in you understanding and living righteous and, and, and having a God kind of love. 
So this morning, let me explain the biblical definition of love and why love. So because biblical love is very different from our world or that we live in and the culture's definition, um, many of you define love as a, a, a feeling of, uh, 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 or of romance. And that's how you look at love. You, you want people to love you. You want a man or a woman to love you. And the def Bible's definition is active, not based on what we feel, but rather what we do, you know, um, listen, our love as Christians is to be both a response to God's love, a response to how he loves us, and a reflection in our lives of his love. Two points. So, you know, we always go to Mr. Webster when we want to define a word. Uh, and Mr. Uh, Webster defines love as a strong affection for another arising out of kinship or personal ties. Like a um, example would be a maternal love for a child. Um, love is an attraction based on sexual desire. Um, that's an affection and tenderness uh, felt by by the one for, for lovers. Affections based on admiration uh, or common interest. So, what would be an example of that? Maybe you have a schoolmate, someone you grew up with, or people uh, that um, that you encounter uh, very closely with, but that that is, you admire your schoolmate, you admire a person. Um, it's a warm a attachment or enthusiasm, uh, enthusiasm or devotion uh, to something or admiration for something, like you might have a, a love of basketball or a love of movies or something. So th those are... Those are the types of love described by Webster. But what is biblical love? 1 John 4 8 says, whoever does not love does not know God because, and this is key, God is love. God does not just love us or teach us how to love. He is love. God's nature is love. Everything about God is love. So what does it mean that God is loving by nature, which he is? God is the very definition and source of love. To truly know love, uh, we must know God. How can you love someone and not love God? You, God is the definition and the source of love. And to know God is to know love. So when you have a relationship with God, you truly understand the love of God that you can then uh, share with others because of the change that has taken place in you. So God's love is without question and is a very essential attribute that every person should have when they have a relationship with Christ. Because it is love that originates from God and without love, God would not be God. A distinct word for the type of love that God displays in the Greek is called agape love. It's agape. It's A-G-A-P-E. And it refers to benevolent or charitable love that seeks, that seeks after and seeks the best for the loved one. It's unconditional, it's divine, and it's a selfless kind of love. Unlike the world, you know, what we display love, we expect. It's, it's conditional based on what you have done. Other Greek words to describe love is uh, philia, and, uh, and, which is a friendship type of love, and euros, which is um, what we call an erotic or sexual type of love. And once again, you need to understand and make, I want to make this point. God is love. Love is from God. What it means is that Christian love comes from God himself. The world is not the recipient of God's love because it is not worthy. God's love generates within himself and God loves the world because God is a loving God. And this is how Christians must love. 
in a godly manner. It's a divine gift to his people. It's a gift from God. And he tells us that we have to love. And he will not tell us to love and not give us the ability to love and show us how to love. Whatever God tells us to do, he's going to show us. He's going to uh, give us understanding. He's going to demonstrate and, and give us the ability and show us how to love. So how is love described in the word of God? It's in the word. 1 Corinthians 13 verses 4 through 8 gives us several descriptions of love. First of all, it says love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres, and it says love never fails. So based on 1 Corinthians 13, 4 and 8, are you able to honestly say check, check, check to each one of those words that I described as love? That love is kind? Can you check that off? I love, I love people. I love God. Are you kind? Are you envious and jealous of people? Can you check that off? Or do you desire or get upset when someone prospers or gets promoted in a workplace or receives something that you feel you should have gotten first? Love, it does not boast. Can you check that off? It's not proud. Can you check that off? It does not dishonor others. Can you really say you love? Can you check that off? Love is not self-seeking. Can you check? Is there a check by, uh, by your name on that one? Not easily angered. Check. Or are you leaving that blank? It keeps no record of wrongs. Hallelujah. God had to deal with me on this one. And I'm sure he's going to deal with you as well. Because the first thing, you know, I forgive them. I love them, but I don't like them. And you never, and you always throwing up or remembering Satan brings back what they did to you, what they did to you to hurt you, to make you angry, to, you know, uh, that there's something that caused you disappointment. That's what love is. It doesn't delight in evil. It always trusts, hopes, and perseveres. Because love never fails. That's what 1 Corinthians 13, 4, that is how love is described in the word of God. And that's how we should be living our, our lives, displaying those attributes, uh, what I just talked about, the patience and being kind and not envious and not boastful. Patience is something that many have difficulty with because we live in a fast-paced world that works on a schedule. You got to be at work at a certain time. You got to get a, a drive the car and get to point A, point B a certain time. When you pull into a drive through to pick up lunch, you got to get it within a certain time so you can get back in time. I mean, we, there is, it's fast pace. We put food on the stove and because we're hungry and we get hangry because it's not cooking fast enough. <laughs> I'm telling you, little simple things. God knew that patience and, and these other at, things that we talked about would be an issue for us. He gave us a gift, and that gift is love. And also, he gave us a gift of patience. When you look at the, the fruits of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit, patience is part of who God is in dealing with us, and God is patient and kind with us, and we need to be patient with others. 
because the fruit of the spirit it in in Galatians 5:22 it said the the fruit of the spirit is love that's number 1 joy peace patience it's a gift from God kindness generosity faithfulness gentleness and self control i'll talk about some of those a, a momentarily but God knew what we needed. That's why when we accept him, he gives us the gift of love and patience, the fruit of the spirit. James 1, 2, and 3, because if we lack the patience, he said, my brother, encounter our joy when you fall into various tasks, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. Here we see that the testing of our faith produces what? Patience, because patience is what we need and it's part of love. So as he builds us up and he sees that we lack that love, we lack patience, he will work it in us through the situations, the trials that come on, on our life so we can finally depend on him, stand still and wait on him so we can be patient like we're supposed to be because that's part of the description of love. Love is patient. So do you really say, are you really understanding what love is are you seeing based on what i've said so far what love truly is romans 5 3 and 4 says this and not only that but we also glory in tribulation knowing that tribulation produces perseverance and in perseverance character and character hope this tells us that tribulations produces perseverance or patience which is another word perseverance is another word for patience patient love also means choosing to love the other person even when you don't feel like it or it isn't easy when that person has rocked your world has disappointed you when you have walked in on them discussing you in a negative manner even when someone has wronged you, you choose to love them anyway and won't call it quits just because you are tired, frustrated, or hurt. That's all part of love, the definition of love. Our love must be an active type of love. It cannot be in word only, but it has to be in deed. To love like God loves is to sacrifice. And sacrificial love is the foundational ethic of uh, ethnic of Christianity, of Christianity to be a Christian. Again, it's kind, it's patient, it doesn't envy, it doesn't boast. So why would God tell us to love and we don't do it? Why would He give us a gift that we don't accept? If he was giving us cars, we would be praising God and saying hallelujah. A new house promotions. When God gives you your spouse that you've been praying for, you get excited. But many of us fail in the area of love as described in the word of God. We think love is an emotional uh, feeling that when, 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 you see someone that excites you, that's love. We need to accept every gift that God has bestowed upon us that he has reached out to give to us. Like I described in Galatians 5.22. You know, the man who walked this earth, who demonstrated true love was Jesus. And when you study the word, the gospels of Jesus Christ, you will see how he displayed his love throughout his life and his ministry. His love, um, the people of God should help us to understand that our love must be active it can not be in word only, but in deed, and it should demonstrate and emulate what Jesus did on earth. 
He set an example when he was here of kindness and love because he displayed patience, generosity, self-control. How did he do that? By serving others. By, by, by seeking out the poor, the sick, and the distressed, giving them words of encouragement. It wasn't always about giving them money, but expressing words of encouragement. He provided for their needs. He healed the sick. He laid hands on them and recovered. He cast out demons. But he also encouraged them with the word. He told his disciples in John 5 and 12, he said, this is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. That's what he told the disciples then, and he is telling us, the disciples of Christ, this today in 2022. God has shown us mercy, so therefore we are able to show mercy to others because he has shown us love. We can show love to others. Let me break this down for you. Let me, let me say this. When you read the Gospels, Jesus healed the sick, sick without requirement of gratitude. That's what real love is. Sometimes you're going to help somebody and they're not going to say thank you. Are you going to turn your back on them and then the next time they need help, not reach out to them and help them? Many of us do that. They didn't say thank you. They didn't show appreciation. But that's not what true love is. You cannot expect someone to do for you because you did for them. The world doesn't work that way. They don't think that way. We, our, our thoughts should be uh, godly thoughts. We should allow the Holy Ghost to lead us and to guide us. And when he tells us to do something, we need to do it based on what he's told us, not based on what they didn't do for you. Jesus was moved with compassion and he healed the sick. In Matthew 14, 14, he said when he saw the crowds, he was deeply moved with compassion for them because they were troubled and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. We need to have more compassion from one another. There's times when I read on Facebook, people are in need of prayer. They, they're going through some things or they're expressing um, how they feel. Instead of talking about them or making negative, did you see what they posted? They, they sharing all their heartache. They shouldn't do that or they shouldn't do that. But when people need prayer, when you see they're hurting, we need to get on our knees and, and, and lift them up in prayer. If you know them personally, you need to reach out to them. Send them a text, make a phone call. You're texting everything else and let them know, hey, are you okay? You don't have to ask them exactly what's going on, but just show some compassion and love towards them. Are you okay? Do you need something? That's real. That's real love. Jesus was able to pray for those who even persecuted him, who ridiculed him, who lied on him, who placed him on a cross. That is real love, y'all. Even when he hung on the cross, Jesus prayed for the forgiveness of the ones who placed him there. And when you go back in scripture, he even prayed for the woman caught in adultery. He didn't talk about her. He didn't dog her out. He didn't pick up the phone and share it with all your friends and family members. He forgave her. He showed love and compassion towards her. Romans 5, 8, but God commands his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He hung on the cross for us. That is real love. I'm telling you, I know what I'm talking about. People, relatives hold grudges against you for no reason. 
And that's because they don't love. People don't understand when people hurt you. Yeah, you may hurt for that moment, but you got to shake it off and ask God to deliver you so you can love them anyhow. Let go and let God deal with you and help you in this area. Understand that love is self-sacrifice and you may not want to, but you got to sacrifice and press your way to get to the place where God would have you to be in love. You have to be generous. Love is unending and it's not a temporary feeling or attraction. God's love for the world, we know love is also undeserving and unreciprocated or one-sided. Just because they don't love you back, you got to still love people. <laughs> Hallelujah. You have to. In this world, we can give, give, and give. Help reach out to others. And they don't reach out to you. But you got to love them. You can't be disappointed in their behavior. You can't carry that hurt and you can't remain angry. Because if that happens, you'll get to the point where you stop doing, giving, and at some point you won't even communicate with them. So is your response to that behavior true love? I'm telling you, God is dealing with me in so many areas in my life, but I am a willing vessel seeking the Lord, asking him to show me me. And you need to do the same thing. I'm not judging you. I'm just sharing what God has given me for you to help encourage you, to lift you up, to help you in this area of love. Because love is the heartfelt affection of the Christian in response to the love God has shown us, especially in the gift of salvation of uh, through our Lord Jesus Christ. We talked about that and we talk about that all the time. Love is an action word, is an affection which props the Christian to action. It causes us to move and want to, to do something to, to benefit in a lot of cases other people besides ourselves. Because as I said before, love is not self-centered. Love is first and foremost directed toward God and then towards others in order of priorities. Your God, your family, especially our mates, our neighbors, and even people, listen to this, even our enemies. <laughs> even our enemies. I love my husband. I, I truly love him. And I and I show my love towards him in what I do. It's not the cooking and the cleaning, you know, and making sure he has his breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You know, it's not the intimate love, but it's the little things that you do. And I'm and I must say, I did something this week that some women, I don't know if you have ever done this. But God placed it on my heart to give my husband some flowers. You know, he's given me flowers on numerous occasions, not just on Valentine's Day or, 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 or on my birthday or just one day I had a doctor's appointment I, and he was waiting for me and there was a flower shop across the, the street. He walked over and when I got in the car, he had flowers for me. You know, that's showing love. You know, it's a show. He's showing a, a that he cares for me and he wanted to bring a little joy but i wanted to do the same thing so i bought him flowers and i handed it to him he said what you giving me these for <laughs> so i laughed i said those flowers are for you he said oh he was so excited after that and he shared it with some of his friends but little things like that love subordinates the interest of the lover to the one who is loved. 
That means that subordinate means comes first. Love inspires um, service to others. Which is intended for their good at our expense. Sometimes it's going to cost you something. Like in, in, the, in the church, in the ministry, when people sow into your ministry, when they give $5, when they give $20, when they sow a, 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 half, a hefty seed into your, into your ministry, that's an act of love. I don't, I don't hound or, or oppress it at the end of the, I, I, I mentioned it in the beginning about giving through Givelify, but I don't pressure people into giving. The work that I do, the, the, the messages that I deliver is because God woke me up and, and, and gave it to me and told me to share it with the world. This is my calling, not to get a paycheck from it. I appreciate every gift given, but understand that is if you don't understand or realize that is an act of love. How many of you that belong to a church ever give outside of the church, the, the, the place that you go? How many of you ever listen to the voice of God and give sow a seed in another ministry? That's an act of love. And when you have an act of love, the Bible said love never fails. God is love. Has God ever failed you? I know he's never failed me. First Corinthians 13, 13, when you get down to verse 13, from our, God, love never fails is, uh, is first Corinthians 13 and eight. But when you read down to 13, it says, and now these three remain, there's faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. First John three, this is how we know that what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. If anyone has material possessions and sees a brother or a sister in need, but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in that person? Let us not love with words of speech only, but with actions and in truth. Don't tell me you love me and you really don't. I love you. No, you don't. I can tell. I can pick it up in my spirit. I can see the way you treat me. I can hear what people have said and gotten back to me. I'm not just speaking of myself. I'm saying with using that as a general example. I don't want people saying, oh, she's, she's tripping. No, I'm not tripping. I'm just sharing with you so people can understand what I'm saying. I'm not saying this is me. I'm saying this as an example for you to understand. To love one another. It's required as a Christian, con as our Christian conduct. People would have us loving people who only um, do for us. We love we love you every time they oh I love you because you they gave you something. There's a song a theme song people have this theme song in their life, and they don't even realize it. They say they love, but they don't even realize this is their favorite song. What is that, Pastor? What have you done for me lately? <laughs> what have you done for me lately? You know that song, Janet Jackson. Everybody that's listening that's saved, you know you, you heard that song. What have you done for me lately? That is your theme song of life. <laughs> wow. The world's love is self-centered. Your thinking is in humanistic thinking, meaning it's not godly. But one thing I have learned as I continue to mature in Christ and understand people, 
of God, the process of maturing is continuous process that never ends. God is still working on me and he should be, you should allow him to work on you. A spiritual, uh, spiritual mature Christian whose characters, disposition, words, and actions emulate the character, character of Jesus Christ himself. So when we are mature in Christ, we know and know what love is, and it is the key motivation for our obedience to Lord, the Lord's commands. When we love, we want to be obedient to God. We don't want to disappoint him. In Ephesians 5, 1 and 2, Paul calls on the church in emphasis to be imitators of God and beloved children and walk in love. Just as Christ also loved us and gave himself up for us and offering a sacrifice to God as a fragrant aroma. Spiritual maturity is a goal that all Christians should be striving after as we seek to imitate God and live out God's and Christ's love in our lives. 1 John 5, 1 and 3 says this. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God and everyone who loves the father loves his child as well. Did you hear that? If you say you love God, you love this child as well. This is how we know that we love the children of God by loving God and carrying out his commands. In fact, this is love for God to keep his commands and his commands are not burdensome. I have to come to know and strive for, and this is, and, and that is this. Love must be at the root of everything that you and I do and must be evident in our action because it stabilizes. It's a stabilizing factor in our lives. That's what love is. We have to, when we wake up, we know that God loves us because he woke us up that morning. Love stabilizes us and, and, and allows us to do the work in his kingdom. That when we see going to a grocery store, we can express our love for Christ to someone who doesn't know Christ. I have to come to know and want you to know, just like Paul wrote in the New Testament in Romans 8, 38 and 39. He said, and I am convinced that nothing can ever, ever, ever separate us from God's love. Not death nor life, neither angels or demons, fears for today or our worries about tomorrow. Nothing, not even the powers of hell, can separate us from the love of God. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. So it is very clear that God exalts God Christ-like character more than ministry, faith, or the possession of spiritual gifts. You got to understand that. You can be the most, um, you can have all types of spiritual gifts. But love has to come first and, and has to be demonstrated. He, you can have a gift of prophecy. But when you prophesy, you have to do it out of love. When you preach the gospel like I'm doing today, I'm preaching the gospel out of love. When you give to someone, don't go boasting and telling everybody what you did for that, that person, putting it on Facebook. I, look what I gave. What you do, you do it out of love. That's all I'm saying. No, th that's all God is saying. That's not me. I'm just repeating what I'm hearing in my ear. <laughs> God values and emphasizes character that acts in love. 
that acts in patience, that acts in kindness, that has a hatred for evil, everything that I talked about, and who endures, endures in righteousness. The greatest in the kingdom of God would be those who demonstrate general, general, genuine love for God and people, not necessarily those who are greatest in outward accomplishments. You can have a powerful preacher, people tuning into, listening to, sharing, sharing that page when they're preaching the word because of their oracle skills. But behind closed doors, when they're not on camera, they are the rudest, nastiest people in the world and don't want to give. You have mega churches out here that when people are in need, they turn their back on it. They lock the door. Don't let them in. They're homeless. That's not true love. I'm telling you. God is watching. He's looking. You're going to have to explain yourself before you go before God. When you go before God and explain yourself because he's going to want to know why. Because you don't have a heart of love. He knows why, but he, you need to examine yourself. I'm just saying. God's love poured out within the believer's heart through the Holy Spirit. Outside of God, we cannot possibly love one another the way we ought to without the supernatural work of the Holy Spirit. I'm telling you. Some people just hard to love. Their attitudes are terrible. They, I mean, they hard to love. And it takes the help of the Holy Ghost in order for you to be able to love them. God gave me a scripture early in the week out of um, Psalms it, that says we need to keep watch over our tongue. <laughs> That's because we have to love people in spite of what they say to you, in spite of what they do to you, and in spite of what they don't do and what they don't say and how you expect them to act. They may not act the way you expect them to act. But that doesn't mean that you don't love them anyhow. Through the help of the Holy Spirit, we can be strengthened and we can have our spirits energized with his life. And bring our feelings, our thoughts, and our purposes more under God's influence and direction, enabling us to set aside our, our sinfulness and our selfishness so we are able to open up and love more. When we are transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit, we are given a capacity for the supernatural love that God has because he's the source of our help. He helps us to build our our love foundation. What does Ephesians 3.17 said that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith and I pray that you being rooted and established, rooted and established in what? In love. Our love needs to be deep. It has to be deep. It has to go down deep inside of us. It has to. We have to get to the place someone posted, made a comment. We have to ask God for help and pray without ceasing and get us to that place. <laughs> it takes prayer, y'all. It takes trust in God. It takes perseverance. It takes us reading the word, studying the word. It takes fasting and prayer in order for us to be rooted and established in love. It's a work in progress and it never ends. Because the Holy Spirit can transform our hearts.
with the supernatural power of God. When John says that whoever loves has been born of God and knows God, he is not teaching that every human being who loves another is therefore born of God. First John four nineteen. we love because he first loved us. If anyone says I love God, but hates his brother is a liar. For whoever does not love a brother whom he has not, who he has seen cannot love God who he has not seen. And this is a commandment we have from him. Whoever loves God must also love his brother. Saints, Christians, people of God, you got to love your brother. If you don't, then you, you, you're not who you say you are. You're perpetrating. Is that the right word? I, I hope I'm saying that right. You got to put your others' needs before your own. When you love like God loves, you are able to forgive and forget. People say, I forgive them, but I'm not going to forget. I'm not going to forget what they said. I'm not going to forget what they did. That's not love. When you love like God loves, you truly treat people with respect and not talk about them by tearing them down. If you love like God loves, when you see a change in their personality, maybe uh, they're acting out of character. They seem withdrawn. You should be led by the Holy Spirit to reach out them, to them sincerely and ask them, do you need prayer? I said this earlier. Love must be sincere. Romans 12, 9 and 13 says this. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourself. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual favor serving the, the Lord. Be joyful in hope patient in affliction, faithful in prayer, share with the Lord's people who are in need, practice hospitality, hospitality. That's what love is. That is what love is. God is love. So as I close, understand, our salvation is an expression of God's love. And God's love does not discriminate. <laughs> oh, Jesus. We can hate what's going on in the world, but we still have to love one another. As I continue 1 John 4, 9, 11, this is how God showed his love. He sent his one and only son of the world that I'm he might, we might live through him. This is love. Not that we love God, but the love he loved us. And he sent his son as a atoning sacrifice for our sins. He loved us and he sent his son to be the propitiation, the atonement for our sins. He demonstrated his love for us in action. So the greatest, the greatest demonstration, the greatest demonstration, the greatest demonstration of acting love was when he sent his son to die for us. He didn't send him as a, a, a reward to the obedient, but rather as a ransom for the defiant, for the sinful. And if you want to demonstrate love towards one another, let me leave you with these two scriptures. Romans 12, 14 says, Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position and don't be conceited. That's what the word of God says. And lastly, in Colossians 3.13, Paul writes that we should be bearing one another, bearing with one another 
And if one has a complaint against another, forgiving, forgiving, forgiving each other as the Lord has forgiven you. So you must forgive. Ooh, not saying you forgave them and then acting like you don't. Love is part to have love, to true love of Christ, to be and have love for one another. You have to forgive them. I'm talking to somebody out there. Don't be phony about it. Be real about it. Forgive them. So when they call, you don't cringe when their number uh, comes up on caller ID. Or when you walk into a place and, and they're sitting there, oh, I got I to gotta sit with them. No, you got to love them. Change the attitude, y'all. Get more, become more like Christ. Learn to walk in the God kind of love that I just talked about. There's so much more to love that I didn't touch on it. And I may finish it next week unless God gives me something different. But you need to pray to God to be more Christ-like. Stay in his word, people. And, and so we can be more loving to one another. And when you, when you love someone and, and you really love someone, it becomes contagious. And maybe that's what some of your friends and people that you know need in their life. So you can draw them to Christ. So with that said, that's the broadcast for today. If you have not accepted Christ in your life, confess with your mouth that you're a sinner, that you want Jesus coming to your life and save you. He's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. You don't have to do a thing just as far as cleaning yourself up. Let him do it for you. And watch a change happen in your life he'll give you the gift of the spirit and the fruit of the spirit so you can become more like him he will show you what true love is not what the world gives because the world would disappoint you but the christ kind of love that will bring joy peace and happiness into your life and then you stop fooling around and getting involved with the wrong types of relationships men and women because if someone loves, if someone loves God, they, they'll know how to treat you. I'm telling you, they'll love you in the Christ-like type of manner. They'll appreciate you. So with that said, have a blessed week. And, and God, listen to this broadcast again. Share it with your friends and family. Later on, go to the YouTube channel, The Spoken Word with Pastor Sandra Glover Carter. And if you would like to show love towards this ministry you can go to givelify look in the dashboard click on the givelify link it'll take you to shield of faith ministries 17356 northland park court in southfield michigan or you can copy and paste the link and then it'll take you there be blessed and have a wonderful week amen